a nationally billed matchup takes place today at the Al. The number 10 Marquette Golden Eagle squaring off against the number 13 Creighton Blue Jays. Two conference rivals, both top 15 in the country, both undefeated in Big East play. And this is likely the most important game of the regular season for both teams, at least until they meet again in the conference finals. I'm Dan Abington alongside John Leuzzi, and we are live in Milwaukee, Wisconsin presenting this match only on Marquette Radio. John, this place is going to be electric tonight. It really is, Dan. This is such a great matchup here between two top 15 teams. Marquette is really going to hope that the Owls' atmosphere of home field advantage takes a big part in today's game. The Marquette come, Golden Eagles come in at a record of 15-2 overall, undefeated in the Big East at 5-0. They're number 10 in the country. They've been in the top 10 for five weeks now, and they've reached a higher ranking than any team in the program ever has. So John, no better year to topple the always potent Creighton Blue Jays. For sure, and Marquette really had a high note. They're coming in on that sweep last night against Providence. So you know that they're on a big high note, Dan. You got to continue with the success they've had. They have had so much success throughout this entire season. Marquette is three and 16 all time against the Blue Jays. Currently on a five game losing streak. The Golden Eagles haven't won one of these since October 5th of 2017 when they swept Creighton here at home. Marquette does have better odds at the Al than they do on the road, being two and five in Milwaukee, while just one and nine at DJ Sokol Arena in Omaha. Yeah, they really, and you gotta work, let all the past hat get away from you. Can't think about that here tonight. This is a new season and Marquette needs to be ready. Play the Marquette way against a good Creighton team. Creighton comes in today at 12 and three overall, also undefeated in the Big East at five and zero. Oh. They're the number 13 team in the nation, which is the highest they've been ranked all season. They graduated two of the most decorated players in program history last year in Jolly Winters and Taryn Cloth, but they still have tons of weapons at the net, a strong libero, an All-American setter, and Coach Kirsten Berndahl Booth certainly knows how to coach up an excellent team. They really do, and Marquette is really gonna have to stop Madeline Cole, the setter for this Mar Blue Jays team. This 5'10 senior has just been off to a great start this year, and she'll be one of the big problems that Marquette is gonna have to stop if Marquette wants to win tonight. The starters for tonight's game for Creighton at the outside hitter spots. They're going with Jayla Zimmerman and Erica Kostlak. We can also expect Keely Davis to be in the mix later on in the game. At defensive specialist, number 16, Emily Bressman. As John mentioned, Madeline Cole is the setter. The two middle blockers, number 19, Megan ba Ballinger, and number 21, Naomi Hickman. And the libero is number two, Brittany Witt for the Marquette Golden Eagles. They're starting out with a different lineup than they've been used to so far this year. Number one, Claire Mosier. Number two, Hannah Vandenberg. Number eight, Hope Wirch. Number 10, Allie Barber. Number 18, Gwyn Jones. Number 23, Elizabeth Orff. And the setter, number seven, or the libero rather, number seven, Martha Kanavadoff. Yeah, Marquette is gonna be out with, without again, KJ Lyons, the transfer from the University of the Pacific. She's not dressed today, but you gotta look at, see how Coach Ryan Tice brings in Lauren Speckman. Spark, Speckman did not play against Providence yesterday. She's dressed here tonight, so probably see her in the rotation quickly. Marquette wearing their white jerseys. Creighton countering with their blues. Once again, I'm Dan Abington alongside John Leuzzi here at the Al McGuire Center. Number 10 Marquette against number 13 Creighton. This is the first time two top 15 teams have ever met at the Al McGuire Center. There's been top 20 matchups, but this is the first time both squads have been in the top 15. Both teams undefeated in Big East play. That won't be the case after tonight. No, it won't. And both teams coming in on a high note. Advantage. This place is packed right now, but Creighton also brought their fan section, so they'll be having the chairs for this Creighton Blue Jays team right behind their bench also. Yeah, Creighton travels pretty well, and for potentially the biggest game of the regular season, at least until they meet at DJ Correct. Sokol Arena later on, this is one they wanted to travel to. Yeah, this is the one that everybody circles on their calendar when they see Marquette versus Creighton, both when they play home and away, so they're definitely going to be, they're in for a good match, and we're in for a good one on the call too. Marquette. Projected first team overall in the Big East. Meanwhile, Creighton number two, despite having won the conference last season. Marquette has not won in five games against the Blue Jays. So they're trying to get some revenge today. Creighton won this matchup three times last season, both twice in the regular season and then in the Big East playoffs. And now we are underway at the Al McGuire Center.
Creighton served. Marquette goes right to Barber. They get it up. And Creighton sends a free ball over. Moser puts one up. Vandenberg gets it blocked. And that one's out of bounds. Good Marquette start. point. Good start there by the Golden Eagles. Just continue up on the line right around the net and do what they do best. Valley Barber with her and the blocks. So Vandenberg will serve now for the Golden Eagles. Up 1-0. Zimmerman gets it up. Cole puts it over for Ballinger, but it's put back up by Martha Kanavadov. A bit of a free ball, tip shot from Barber. Marquette blocks it. And Creighton gets the point after Marquette just couldn't handle it. It was a bit of a free ball, but Orff couldn't get her hands on it. Yeah, Orff couldn't get there. She just lost her balance there with there, but Creighton just went back to what Marquette did in the first point. Stay up in the box, get the blocks going. Ballinger serves. Vandenberg, Mosier. Sets one up for Wurtz. It gets blocked at the net by Madeline Cole and Naomi Hickman. Yeah, Hickman's going to be a big guy, a big person here for Marquette to get the ball past 6'4", Junior, right up at the line, just like what Barber does for this Golden Eagles team. 34 blocks on the year. Make it 35. Works. Tip shot. Great work by Naomi Hickman. Put that one right back down in the middle of the floor, and no Marquette defender was able to handle it. Yeah, Barber tried to get her hand on it. She wasn't able to get both on there, but one and it just went out of the bounds. Unusual start for the Golden Eagles here tonight. 3-1 lead for the Blue Jays. Service error from Megan Ballinger. So Marquette gets it back. Kanavadov is going to serve. Orff comes off. Jones comes on in the rotation. Kanavadov serve. Bressman, that should have been double contact, but no call. I don't understand how that one wasn't called. It hit Bressman's right hand, then the left. Yeah. Tice is going to, I don't know if he's going to challenge this or he's talking to the, the down judge, but I guess that one's going to be Creighton Point. Yeah, look, and you saw that from that Creighton team. Once the ball went down to the ground on Marquette's side, they knew they got away with that. But you got to look at this is an experienced or official step that Tice hasn't had a lot of success against. Barber smacked one down, but it's brought up, and then she finds the floor once again. That was an errant pass from the Creighton back row, and Barber was able to just smack it right down. Good awareness from the senior. For sure, great IQ there on the read for Barber just to find open ground in no man's land to put that one in then. Sarah Rose comes on to serve. Cole. Sets that one up for Zimmerman. No touch. That's Marquette point. Went way long. Yeah, just a little, just way too long on there. Tied up at 4-4. Rose serves again. Short serve. Cole set it up. And it's able to be smacked down by the Creighton middle. Yeah, what, whenever her opponent sees film and she, they see Martha Kanavadov do what she just did on the court, she thinks she's able to get in point. Kanavadov, Rose sets it up, works back row attack, and it's blocked by Creighton. They had, I think it was six hands up at that net, and Wirtz had no chance. Yeah, poor job there by the Golden Eagles to not keep that on the ground. Rose just not able to hold on to it. Rose sets it up for the Jones slide. And that's going to be Creighton point. Marquette thought it was a touch, but no call. 7-4, Golden Eagles trail. It'll be Eric Kostelak still serving. Not having Speckman or Lines both in the game is really hurting the Golden Eagles early in this one. Jones smacks one right down. Great set. The quick set from Sarah Rose, and Jones put it right into the hands of a defensive specialist who could not handle the heat. When in doubt, go back to the, the basics. And just spike it down as hard as you can for the opponent not to get it. Sometimes it's that simple, John. Yeah, it really is. Wirtz serves. Cole Hickman blocked by Jones. Cole picks it up on the other end. Zimmerman. Rose digs it out. Wirtz, back row attack, blocked. That's going to be a Creighton point. I think the officials ruled that it didn't go over the net. 
It looked to me like it did go over. Yeah, it did so, look like it, and I think Tice is going to... Yeah, Tice is bringing yeah. out the challenge card. Yeah, it's a. I think it's a good challenge there for Tice. It looked like, as you said, Dan, it went over the net, and even, even Gwyn Jones thought it went over, and who had the last touch on it, too. So Tice is going to challenge that it was not an attack error. It was actually a touch by Creighton. John was talking a little earlier about how Marquette is without KJ Lines in today's matchup. The outside hitter. Probably the most lethal player outside of Barber yeah. and Wurch. But she's not suited up for today's game. Wasn't yesterday either. Marquette does have Lauren Speckman suited up. She warmed up earlier today, the starting setter. But she hasn't seen any time just yet. So my guess is that it might just be a, uh, a bit of a fake-out tactic that she was warming up, so you need to worry about Speckman. It, it could be that, but also we're still in the first set, and as we get longer in the game, if Marquette needs to get something going on the momentum, Tice can use her just for that moment, too. So, But certainly certainly different, op, different uh, theories to uh, Speckman being dressed here tonight. So it was touched by Creighton. I think it's going to be Marquette's serve. Not a Golden Eagles point, I don't think. Yeah, so still... it'll just be a, I guess, a redo of the last point, to put it into common terms. Well, on the Jumbotron, it has 7-5, but on the live, chat, uh, fi live statute, it has 8-5. Yeah, they, they just took the point back. Uh, they just didn't do and it And stats the... didn't update yet. There it is. Now it's updated. Cole. Puts one up for Keeley Davis, and it was blocked by Marquette, but it went out of bounds. Keeley Davis, 6'1", redshirt red freshman, five-time Big East freshman of the week already. Wow. 2.87 kills per set for the Highlands Ranch, California native, and she is lethal. Vandenberg tries to get one down. It's brought back up by Creighton. Marquette gets a free ball. Vandenberg back, and that one hits off Vandenberg on the block. Creighton point once again, 9-5, to five, Marquette trails. Yeah, Creighton's just putting everybody up at the line and right around the net, and Marquette just can't get any of these spikes over the, over the Blue Jays players right Creighton, now. Creighton's getting four hands in front of all hitters, so the setters are going to need to vary the looks. Koontz puts it down, but it's brought back up by Brittany Witt. Wurch gets one up. That one's just barely brought up by Marquette. They came crashing into the broadcast booth yeah. right there. Kept it up, but that's it's a, a Creighton point, and Marquette needs a timeout. 10-5, yeah, Creighton leads. That's a great job there by Witt to get down on the floor for the dig to put the ball back up, and Marquette was just not able to hold on to the power and the momentum, and Dice is really trying to hope that this freezes the momentum now for the Creighton Blue Jays with this timeout. A lot of times after a timeout, the serve will result in an error. That happens quite a Maybe Tyson just trying to get a bit of a swing here for his team, but if you're the Golden Eagles, you need to change a lot right now because yeah. your offense isn't getting the best looks, your defense isn't able to have enough presence at the net, or they're really not able to bring a lot of balls back up either. It, they've only had two digs counted officially so far. And this, the start to this first set for Marquette looks a lot like Go that Marquette just really wasn't able to get their identity and momentum going in the first set, and then they picked it up and in the second set and on. So hopefully they can fall back on some history and some success they had against St. John's. But Dan, St. John's is not the same team as Creighton. Creighton's just a lot stronger team and a lot more power and a lot more talent. Yeah, that's exactly what I was going to say. I mean, you can afford to make some of those mistakes against a team like St. Yeah. John's, but when you're playing a nationally ranked team like Creighton, that's not going to fly. This is, this is a lot like that Alabama and Clemson college football kind of games. You, you, just, you just can't fall into a big of a hole to start the game off. Yeah, two high-level teams. You can't make any errors or else the other team's going to run away with Correct. it. Correct. Good analogy there, John. Thank you, Dan. So we resume play after the timeout service error. What did I say, John? Hey, you know volleyball and Martha Konominoff knew it too. She just dunked down a little bit to let the ball go over her head and to give Marquette that point. Brittany Witt sent that one long, so it's going to be a Gwyn Jones serve for the Golden Eagles. 10-6, Creighton leads. Witt, Cole, Zimmerman, Marquette blocked it, so it's an easier play. Koontz, opposite attack, brought up by Creighton. 
Zimmerman's going to need to improvise a little bit. Vandenberg gets a swing. Goes cross. Hannah Vandenberg with a great decision to send that one cross. Nobody was there. Great cross there by Vandenberg on the left side of the court to put it all the way down right. She saw nobody there in that in the side of the court to get that point from Marquette. Jones gets it over the net, but Creighton's attack too strong. 11-7. Kanavidov come back, comes back on, so Marquette has their libero back on the court. 11-7. Vandenberg got lucky. She shanked that one, but Madeline Cole tried to attack and just could not get a proper hand on it. Yeah, Cole wasn't able to get the good read on there. Went far left and right into the Marquette bench. On the serve. Davis with a major swing finds the floor right on the line. 12 to 8. A little bit more power, Dana. Might have went into Marquette's side as it just made it inside the box. Men's lacrosse team is here behind the Creighton side, trying to distract him, and it works. Service error by Creighton. The screaming of the guys back there worked. Yeah. 12 to 9. Marquette trails. Vandenberg now going to serve. The bowl around here inside the pit, look, it's pretty packed right now. It's getting, the fans are going into the top set now, so hopefully we get home court advantage. Block by Orff and Wirch, but Creighton keeps it up. Barber gonna get a swing. Out of system, Allie Barber gets it to go. Off the hands of the blocker, she found a spot. Marquette now in double digits, 12-10. Barber with only her second kill. And that's why Ali Barber was a first team Big East last year. Just found, use her IQ, use her smart reads on that and find that point there for Marquette. She has struggled out of system so far this year. So seeing that has to be a good sign for Marquette. As Creighton sends another attack long, 12-11. Vandenberg challenging them with the serves. That one was short. Vandenberg could not get to that one after the Creighton attack. Yeah, she just didn't have a good read on that, and she'll be checked out right now as Kesho comes in. Katie Shesso. Shesho. Sorry. <laughs> Mixed that one Kesho. up. Kesho. 13-11, Creighton leads. Service error once again from the Blue Jays. So Kanavadov now going to serve. Chesso comes in pretty much every set to spell one of the outside hitters. Play the three back row rotations before she comes right back in. Bit of a free ball here for the Golden Eagles. Jones right in the middle, and Barber tried to get it up, but that ball had such a weird trajectory that she couldn't really do much with it. Yeah, it had a weird deflection off of Barber's hands, and Konominov tried going to get there as quick as she could, but she was just a little... The second too late there. Jones had her shot blocked and it yeah. almost went down the net, but not enough for Barber to be there. A fifth service error from Creighton. Teams just trading points back and forth. Creighton really struggling at the service line. They're trying to be aggressive, but they just can't find their spots. Yeah, it's going to be a dogfight here tonight in Milwaukee, Dan. Couldn't have said it any better myself, John. Good up from Sarah Rose. Wirtz gonna attack from the back row. Got it blocked right down. And she has not been able to find any luck with her back row attack so far today. Yeah, Naomi uh, Hickman has just been there and a big block at the at the line and at the net. Marquette just hasn't been get, able to get anything past her and she's really been blocking everything tonight. Hickman has five blocks already. Kuntz gets blocked. And Marquette trails 16 to 13. Yeah, Zimmerman and, and Zimmerman now joining in with, with Hickman right at the line to be one of the two tallest players on the court for the Blue Jays. Seven total blocks for Creighton. Zero for Marquette. Creighton gets super lucky and gets a service ace as that one hit the tape and fell right down. Marquette needs another time.
out 17 to 13, the Golden Eagles trail. Yeah, and it's Golden Eagles just needs to get a relax right here. You just, unfortunate that the ball right there just didn't go their side. It just went, hit the, hit the tape a little bit odd on that one. One of the biggest problems for this Marquette team in the past two years has been the presence of a block at the net. They haven't really had a dominant block at all. I mean, they had Jenna Rosenthal last year who was 6'6", and Marquette still was not especially fearsome at the net. Creighton has shown presence there because if Creighton's going to keep getting hands on every single attack that Marquette has, that's going to make it a lot easier for their back row. Yeah, it really is. And Creighton's making Marquette now adjust to their style of play. They just not, like you said, and they're not able to get anything past those blocks. So Marquette has that, gonna have to draw something up unorthodox to get some points up in here as they're down four now. So it's Sarah Rose, Martha Kanabadov, Katie Shesso, Hope Wirch, Ellie Kuntz, and Gwyn Jones. The Golden Eagle has joined us here at the table. He's also taking he's, Shane Hogan's yeah, uh, he's mic. He's got his own mic. That one's not on, but yeah. He doesn't need to know that. No. 17-13. Marquette trails Creighton at the service line. Shesso gets it up. Jones on the slide, able to put it right down. Good job there by Jones to find the side of the court where the Blue Jays did not have nobody there. Go with a good spike down there, and hopefully it leads to a Marquette momentum now. Hope Wirtz now back to serve. 17 to 14. Almost mishandled by the Blue Jays. Vandenberg gets a big swing, brought up by the back row, Grace Nelson. And Creighton sends it wide. I, it was ruled a touch. Yeah. So that's Creighton point. The the top judge and welcome back to the Al McGuire Center. We apologize for the technical issues, but it's currently Creighton 23, Marquette 18. The Golden Eagles trying to come back before this set gets out of hand. Barber takes a big swing. It goes off the Creighton hands, and Marquette is back on the board. Yes, yeah, Speckman now in the game for the Golden Eagles, and now they can find the bread and butter there with Barber and Speckman to hopefully, hopefully Dan, you get this game a little bit closer in hopes of a Marquette win for the set. Vandenberg serves. Cole tried to tip it over. Orff, great decision, tries to find the back corner, and she does. That's a good read there by Orff to find nobody in the back corner. Just to put a little bit of pressure there on the serve to get that in. 23 to 20. Vandenberg with a challenging serve. It's going to be a free ball for Marquette. Speckman over to Wirch. Cole able to put it back up. Back row attack. Speckman dig. Kanavadov. Barber brought up by Witt again. Speckman. Orff. Back corner. 23 to 21. Elizabeth Orff with back to back kills. Marquette would not have gotten that point if it wasn't for Martha Kanavanov making a full 360 to put that ball back in the air for Ali Barber to pump it up in the air for Speckman to go to Orff. 23-21, 3-0 Marquette scoring run. Cole has it blocked. So it is now set point. 24-21, Creighton leads. Shesso coming on, Vandenberg going off. 24 to 21. It's Orff, Speckman, Barber, Shesso, Kanavadov, and Wirch. Marquette with the defensive lineup out there right now. Barber out of system. Hit that one off of Cole's head, I believe. Kostelak, big swing. Shesso with a great dig. Barber out of system, has to tip one over. Hickman. Has it brought up by Shesso. Kostelak finds the floor. 
Creighton takes the first set despite two huge digs from Katie Shesso on that last point, but Marquette goes down one nothing. That's a great try there by the Golden Eagles to keep the ball in the air and get some drive on there, but Creighton just had the momentum there and to push it in back in. So the Creighton Blue Jays go up at 25 to 21. As far as stats, both teams pretty balanced so far. Kostelak and Davis with four kills for the Blue Jays. And Zimmerman and Ballinger both have three for Marquette. It's Barber and Jones each with three kills. Vandenberg and Orff each have two. As far as assists, it's Madeline Cole with the match high so far with 11 for the Blue Jays. Five for Sarah Rose leading the Golden Eagles. Just one each from Claire Mosier and Lawrence Beckman. Six blocks by Naomi Hickman. And that's the difference in the game right now. Yeah, it is. And going back also to the stats, Hope Wirch has Hope Wirch has five digs on the day. So instead of Kate, Martha Kanavanov not in the as a libero, not getting a lot of those digs so far for the Golden Eagles. So trying to just get more up in the depth of this team that has a lot of depth for Marquette to try to bring something new onto the court. But Dan, this is a big set here now for the Golden Eagles not to go down to nothing. Yeah, if you go down 2-0, it is not an easy road back. But this Marquette team is resilient. They lost the first two sets against Wisconsin and then battled back and won the next three, despite being down at match point multiple times in that third set. They fought back, they outlasted the Badgers, but you really do not want that today if you're one of the Golden Eagles fans because not only is that exhausting, but you also really just want to even this match up and go into the third and fourth set with full stamina. And, and for the Golden Eagles, you really don't want to see a five set because you're going, you're playing two games within 24 hours. Not, but not the Providence game wasn't that long of a game, but still playing two games back to back days has a little bit of a effect on the leg. So trying to get this game quickly and done sooner rather than later but you, the most you can play here is a four set as of right now yeah i mean marquette took some precautions yesterday by keeping speckman out of the game they brought a lot of their starters out towards the end of the second and third sets but if they have to go to a third or if they have to go to a fourth and fifth set i mean creighton played yesterday too they, they played did. in chicago so they had a bit more of a journey to get to this game than the golden eagles did but they still took the first set. So it's been Creighton's presence at the net that's made the most difference in today's game. Seven blocks for the Blue Jays compared to just one for Marquette. Creighton does need to clean it up at the service line, though. Five service errors and just one ace. So they're serving aggressively, but they haven't gotten the results they need. So it looks like it's going to be Speckman, Wirch, Jones, Vandenberg, Orff, and Ali Barber. Jones will obviously be replaced by Martha Kanavadov. And for Creighton, they're going to go with Brittany Witt, Jayla Zimmerman, Keeley Davis, number 19, Megan Ballinger, number 8, Erica Kostelak, and their setter, Madeline Cole. So Speckman is going to serve for the Golden Eagles. They put this one up for Kostelak. Big up from Kanavadov. And Kostelak did a nice job of staying with the play. Putting that one right down. Yeah, great job there by Kostelak to stay with the play. Like you said, Dan, she was able to find the area of the court that Marquette was not able there. Speckman not able to get her just not enough time there to put that back up in there. Kostelak back to serve now. Unorthodox serve style. Barber finds the middle of the floor. Miscommunication by two of Creighton's players, and Marquette capitalizes. Yeah, communication's key here at, in volleyball, as it is all in all sports. Davis and Zimmerman not, able to, not being able to communicate there. You could both just... One, banged with each other. Davis, huge swing. Kanavadov had zero chance of bringing that one back up. Two to one, Creighton leads in the second set. 
I'm Dan Abington alongside John Leuzzi here at the Al McGuire Center. Marquette versus Creighton, a top 15 matchup, 10 versus 13. Wirch finally able to get something going, her first kill of the day. Creighton had her figured out in the first set, so Marquette with the kill. Service error from Martha Kanavadov, Marquette's first of the day. Sent that one directly into the net. Number 18, Madeline Cole back to serve. First team All Big East, AVCA honorable mention All-American last year. Barber, huge swing, finds the floor right in front of Brittany Witt. 3-3. Yeah, and that's what Barber does great. She finds the area of the court where she can just put all her power in there with the kill and get that point from Marquette. Sarah Rose goes back to serve for the Golden Eagles. She has a really distinct serve. Her coaches have called it the Sarah Rose, actually. And another service error for the Golden Eagles. That's two free points that they just gave to Creighton. And that's something that Rose has been doing throughout the entire season for the Golden Eagles. Not able to get enough height there on the serve. When her serve is working, boy, does it work. Other teams yeah. can't read it properly. Jones on the slide. Witt cannot handle that one. That's a good set there for by, by Rose to go on the slide to find Jones. And Jones just went all full in and got there. And Witt just could not able to hold on to it. Jones has seamlessly fit into that middle blocker spot that Jenna Rosenthal left. She's a natural slide hitter, so it works out perfectly. And that's why Marquette recruited her to transfer here. Vandenberg got the block, but it went out of bounds. It got one job done, but the other job to get the point was not there. Just went a little bit out of bounds. Miss Reed on the hand of the ball. Witt serving. 2017 All-American and Big East Libero of the Year. That one off the bad pass from the Golden Eagles. It didn't look to me like that one was in, but it, it just it had to just get in there at the right time. The guy, the, the official all the way to my right was the one who called, not even the one closest to that side of the court. Well, he had the, he had the angle yeah. on the end line here, so it makes sense. Vandenberg had to improvise a little bit, but she's still able to Get one down right in the middle. And Mark, one thing that Marquette has done great so far in this in this entire game was find is finding the weakness of Witt and finding where she can't get the get to the ball that quickly, and that's really they've been able to get there a lot of their points from. Cole all the way over to Kostelak. Wirch one-handed dig. Vandenberg takes a swing. Creighton gets it back up. Cole. Now Vandenberg once again on the swing. Witt brings it up. Kostelak with the little tip kill. Orf missed. It hit off her left hand and went right down to the ground. Yes. That's an unfortunate break for the Golden Eagles. Yeah, Vandenberg was right behind Orf, waiting for the ball to go into the air so she can go down there with the spike. But like you said, Dan, it just went the opposite way from Orf's hand. Vandenberg. Rose. Back over to Vandenberg. Good presence at the net for the Blue Jays. Marquette gets the block, though. Ballinger thought that she had the kill, but Orff was right there along with Vandenberg. Yeah, good job there by Vandenberg and, and Orff to replace Ali Barber up at the line. Two of the taller, other taller players on this Marquette Golden Eagles team, and they've been really able to take advantage of the front line, Dan, tonight. Orff, the leading blocker on this Marquette team. And that's going to be a Marquette ace. Lauren Speckman put that one right in the spot where Creighton couldn't get it. 7-7 in the second set. Witt, Cole, Ballinger had to hurry at it. Vandenberg off the awkward set. Smacked that one directly into the net. 8-7 Creighton leads. Just an awkward 
balance there from Vandenberg to not able to get enough in the air. She was kind of doing it while she was in the air at the same time. A little hard to do that. It was a rough angle yeah. that she had, so there wasn't much that she could do. Barber caught Witt flat-footed. She was going right. Barber sent it left. When in doubt, send it to Ali Barber, and she will get the job done. Vandenberg now serving. The freshman from Little Shoot, Wisconsin. She's made a big impact in her freshman year. Yeah, she has. And she sends one directly into the net. Service error, forehand of Vandenberg. Chesso's going to come on to replace her. Nine to eight now, the Blue Jays lead. That's three service errors in this frame for Marquette. Chesso. And Marquette able to get the kill off the hands of a blocker. That's Elizabeth Orff. Her third kill. Yeah, Orff's trying to do everything she can to replace KJ Lines in this rotation for Marquette. Definitely something tough for any player on this Marquette team to replace. Marquette had to completely rethink what happened there. Kanavadov diving play. Speckman keeps it up. Wirch sent one wide. Marquette thought it I thought was either tipped or in. No, I thought it was in too from just the angle. Tice has got a challenge. Yeah. Tice thinks it found the back corner. The men's lacrosse team also thought it did, so yeah. There was a lot of noise made on that play. But this play is going to be reviewed. Orff, the starting middle blocker for Marquette. 6'3 junior out of St. Louis, Missouri. Only 1.11 kills per set this year. After her two blocks in this game, she's up to 41 on the year. She and Gwyn Jones make a pretty impressive middle tandem. Jones, a graduate transfer to the Golden Eagles. Natural slide hitter, so she's able to provide that for the Golden Eagles. But Marquette has a whole lot of presence at the net when, they, when they're healthy. They have a lot of players that can rotate in. They have Vandenberg, Ellie Koontz, and Madeline Mosier to play the opposite spot. And then it's Wirch, Lines, and Allie Barber that are mainly the regular hitters for the Golden Eagles. Tice lost that challenge. So it's 10-9 Creighton still. and It had to be like a centimeter away from being in, Dana. It was really close. Just barely couldn't find the line. Barber uses the block to her advantage. All knotted up at 10. Yeah, use that block to her advantage. She's such a tall player, 6'5", outside hitter, and just able to do everything she can at the line for this team to put them in the winning, in the winning way. Mosier and Rose come in. And Sarah Rose sent that one about as wide as you could. Yeah. Almost hit the line judge. So it's 11-10, Creighton leads. That's four service errors in this frame for Marquette after zero in the first. They're trying to serve more aggressively, but it is not working. Moser sent it over, and that one was over the pin and out of bounds. And yeah, not a great past two tries for this Golden Eagles team to put the ball in the air in hopes of getting their own point. They've just been giving them to Creighton easily. Keely Davis serving. Jones on the slide. Creighton recovers. Moser got the swing. Big up from Cole. Kostelak. Not able to put it down. Creighton still has it. Tip kill, no good. Wirtz takes a big swing. Cole gets it back up. Free ball. Cole to Kostelak. But Kanavadov brings it back up. Big rally here. Ooh. 
Rose tried the dump, but Witt was right there. Moser. Finds the floor, finally, <laughs> on the huge rally. Both teams with spectacular defense, and Moser finally used the hands of the blocker to her advantage. 12-11, Marquette trails. And good job by, by Moser to put it right in there. What a rally. Yeah. And that's what you come to expect out of these kinds of games, John. You really do. You expect both teams to give, the, give it their all, and they've been doing that here tonight, especially in that rally, Dan. Zimmerman finds the back corner. She was able to split Sarah Rose and Hope Wirch in the back row. 13-11 now. Witt serving directly into the bottom tape. 13-12, that's the first service error for Creighton. Second frame, they're sixth overall. Now Jones at the service line for the Golden Eagles. Ballinger took a big swing and that's a Marquette point as she sent it wide. And that's Gwyn Jones over there just to move her body so the ball doesn't touch it. And that's a veteran play right there by the graduate student. Jones with a short serve, mishandled by Brittany Witt. And Marquette has the lead. It's her first lead of the day also. So Jones serving again. Witt handles this one. Zimmerman and Marquette could not get their hands properly on it. That's because Jones was in the back row, not her usual yeah. territory. So now she's going to come off and Kanavid off. Comes back in on the rotation. Moser got it blocked. Vandenberg, free ball. Marquette blockers are right there on Megan Ballinger, Elizabeth Orff, and Hannah Vandenberg. Big presence at the net right there. Big job again by Vandenberg to be up at the line, be that wall when Allie Barber is not in. And Dan, she's showing why she was a three-time high school conference player of the year there up at the line. Cole sends it to Kostelak. She is quite powerful. Kanavdov couldn't even handle that one. Erica Kostelak, the 6'2 junior outside hitter. Transfer from Cincinnati. She was deemed Creighton's newcomer to watch out for. Literally just took the words out of my mouth, Dan. Her favorite website is YouTube, in case you're wondering, John. Best food she makes is meatloaf. A lot of interesting stuff on the Creighton website. Steckman had to just try to send that one over, and she couldn't do it properly. Yeah. She just skied it, and it landed out of bounds. Vandenberg has it brought up. Barber tries to find the middle. Creighton, great work sending it back over. Barber gets another swing. And Witt sends that one all the way back into the locker rooms. <laughs> yeah. Oh. When Allie Barber's swinging that hard, there's not a lot that the libero can do. Yeah, there really is. And nobody can even hold the, that power of a swing there by Barber. But she's such a deadly player. Davis gets it into the back corner. She was able to split Speckman and Vandenberg. 17-16, Creighton leads. Ballinger serves. Marquette going back to Barber. It gets blocked right at the net, and nobody's going to be able to get there. Speckman hops onto the table in pursuit of that. Up, she got onto that table rather quickly. That was impressive. Yeah, it was. Otherwise, she would have been really injured. But yeah. 
Great acrobatic play by Speckman to save herself, but yeah. can't recover the ball. So it's an 18 to 16 Creighton advantage. Prospects are not looking great for Marquette right now, John. No, it really isn't. And Marquette is trying to get the momentum back, switching into their side of the court and with the barber, with the, all those swings and the kills, Dan. But Creighton's really stepping back in there and they're putting up a fight. And it's, it's a tough match. That's why it's one of the top three matches in the entire country this weekend. So stats update for Creighton. Kostelak leading the way with seven kills, six from Jayla Zimmerman and Keely Davis, and then four for Ballinger. For Marquette, Ali Barber has eight high. Jones is four, Vandenberg and Orff each have three, and then one from Wirch, Mosier, and Kuntz. And if you're Marquette, you really need Hope Wirch to start swinging a little more. She's hitting negative 400 so far in today's game. Five errors on 10, ten total attacks. Just one time has she been able to get a point. And something for Marquette, you also need to rely usual sides and positions of the playing court and that's why a lot of those passes and the kills went out of bounds rather quickly leading to easy creating points so they got to fix it up a little bit on there on that side of the side of the game also Dan so this is gonna be a big swing right here for the Golden Eagles 18 16 they're down Hickman is now back in haven't said her name nearly as much here in the second. And Ballinger sends it long. 18 to 17. Marquette has Kanavadov, Vandenberg, Barber, Speckman, Wirch, and Jones. That's the unit they're running with right now. Davis uses the blocker. She split them and put it in the spot where Martha Kanavadov could not get it. Yeah, that's a good job there by Davis to find the read where Kanavadov could just not get there. And she just, she sw also swings a hard at ball, Dan. So when Kanavadov can't get it, it's tough for the Golden Eagles to get their libero to dig it in the ground. Another service error for Creighton. 18 for the Golden Eagles. 19 points for Creighton right now. Claire Mosier and Madeline Mosier both come on. Huge swing from Jayla Zimmerman, tipped by Marquette, and it's 20 to 18, the Golden Eagles trail. If you're Marquette, you're just trying to stay in this game, even though they're down two points, gotta keep the spirits up high. Davis. Mosher sends it to Jones. Cole puts it up. In the middle of the floor. Great tip kill by Keeley Davis. And Marquette trails by three now. Davis still serving. Aggressive serve from Davis. Kanavadov can't handle it, and it's 22-18. Marquette needs another timeout. Yeah, Marquette needed a timeout there. Nothing was working there and since they ever called it, since the, the, their last timeout just a couple of seconds ago. And now, if you're Marquette, you got to try to get these last four points to tie this game because Creighton's just three points away from another win. And if they go down 2 nothing, Dan, Marquette finds himself in a really big hole. 3 nothing, Creighton Blue Jays run. Marquette really needs to turn it around now. And it's a it's the proper rotation for the Golden Eagles to do that because Allie Barber's in. Yeah. They're not in the rotation where Barber's out. She just came in. So go back to your old reliable. Got to go back to the bread and butter. Speckman, Barber, point. You got to just do that. Right now it's Mosier yeah. in there with Barber, though. So 22-18, Marquette trails in the second set. They're down one nothing. I'm Dan Abington alongside John Lewis here at the Al McGuire Center. First top 15 matchup in the history of the Al. Potentially the biggest regular season game ever to be played here. 
And Marquette needs to turn it around real quick. So we're going to resume play with Keeley Davis serving. Davis trained with the United States Collegiate National Team last year for a week. So you know she's talented. Yeah, for sure. Mosier to Mosier. And they're able to find the floor, that sisterly connection. Yeah, that sister duo helping Marquette there get th a point closer, down only three now. So any next person up mentality here now, Dan. Marquette has to get Barber back on the floor. Almost a mishandled serve, but it's going to be a free ball for Marquette. Kanavadov, Mosier, Vandenberg gets it blocked. Wurch had her hand there. And Madeline Mosier finally able to get a point for the Golden Eagles, 22 to 20. That's a great job there by Madeline Mosier to just put it there for Creighton to get the touch right before it fell out of bounds. They're only down by two now. That play was only possible because of Wirch and her save in the back row. And now Wirch hits the top of the tape, 23 to 20. Creighton leads. Yes, service sir. errors kill you. Yeah, they really do, and they're killing Marquette in the second set. They didn't have a single service error in the first set. They have a lot in this set, and they're going to have to clean that up. Witt. Madeline Mosher with her third kill of the frame. One in down, Dan. Stay with the hottest player. Madeline Mosher has just been on fire ever since the last Marquette timeout. So just continue feeding off of her to get this game closer in hopes of turning the momentum around. Yeah, you send it right back to the player with the hottest arm as Gwyn Jones sends a serve long, and it is Creighton set point. Twenty-four to twenty-one. Service error by Jayla Zimmerman. Marquette still has some life. Yeah, Marquette and Creighton just trading off these service errors, and they're making that a real closer game than it needs to be. Barber and Speckman come back on, and will it be the perfect time? Who knows? Who knows? Speckman to serve. Barber puts it up. Vandenberg tip. And that ball was sent right into the tape. 23. That's a good job there by Orff and Barber right at the line. Just stick next to each other. Use it as glue via that brick wall and just put it right in front of Creighton's face. And you're only down one point now. Creighton takes a timeout. 24 to 23. The Blue Jays lead. Marquette needs this point to stay in it. Marquette lost the first set 25-21, and they're in danger of losing the second. 24-23, Marquette trails, but they're on a bit of a run here. Man, Marquette just has not been able to get any kind of momentum going here, John. They, yeah. they just keep trading points. They and really every do. time they do that, they get service errors. Yeah, and you can't afford to have service errors in the game of volleyball, especially when it's such a high-profile game like you're playing here tonight at the Al McGuire Center against Creighton, a team that you really haven't had a lot of success in in the past how many so years they've been playing against each other in the Big East. But, you know, you got to find the, go back to the fundamentals, Dan, and try and hope of getting the momentum back and switching. Only down by one now. This is the closest that Marquette has been in a while. Marquette is 3-16 and 16 all time against the Blue Jays on a five-game losing streak. They haven't won one since October 5th of 2017 when they swept Creighton here at the Al McGuire Center. Just 2-5 and five in Milwaukee are the Golden Eagles when they're playing against the Blue Jays. 1-9 on the road. So Speckman comes back on to serve. Nearly a service ace. Wow. Wow. Erica Kostelak with a veteran move. Sent that one off the blockers. And it goes right down onto the floor. 
Marquette trails two to nothing. Yeah, this is what Coach Tice does not want to have his team go into the third set. Down two nothing against a good Creighton team who has all the momentum there. But if you have to look for some positiveness in that second set, Dan, it's the, after this, towards the end part, Madeline Mosier getting on fire, but just not able to communication, Dan. It just hasn't been great for the Golden Eagles tonight. That last point's really going to sting because that yeah. should have... It should have been a free ball that came right back to the Golden Eagles. But instead, Kostelak put it right off the arms of the blockers, and the ball goes straight down into the ground. And all of a sudden, Marquette loses the set. Yeah, and you can't have this happen for Marquette. You got to start the third set on a fire and get a big lead here because you know Creighton, Dan, they're going to be coming out with some purpose here in hopes of getting, that, getting the sweep here in Milwaukee tonight. Gotta to, got to limit the service errors too because they, they gave too many easy points to Creighton in that second set. Yeah, I mean, six service errors in one frame is not gonna win you no. a game. I mean, they, they actually played a lot better at the net. They, they hit 229 compared to a, a much worse percentage in the yeah. first, but you, you just can't have that many errors at the service line. I understand that they're trying to serve aggressively, but when you're serving aggressively and hitting the net every time, that's not going to help. Yeah, it really isn't. And Creighton has had given Marquette some easy points on the service errors, but they're just a more talented team. They're able to hold the ground up at the at the line, and the blocks have just been killing Marquette. Marquette just hasn't been able to get to their normal scheme of things. They've had to adjust to Creighton bringing so much so much of a presence at that line. 25-23. Marquette lost the second set. A heartbreaking loss after Marquette had a bit of a string of points fighting back from down 24-21. Stats update. Kostelak and Davis each have eight kills for Creighton, which is tied with Ali Barber's eight for the match high. Seven each, or seven for Jayla Zimmerman and four from Ballinger. Jones and Madeline Mosier have four for the Golden Eagles. Three from Vandenberg and Orff, and then one from Wurch and Kuntz. As far as assists, Madeline Cole clearly the match high with 20, as she's the only setter that really sees time in Creighton system. Marquette runs a 6-2, so they run two setters, and today they've mainly gone with three. Speckman has eight. Rose has six, and Mosier has four. Brittany Witt, the only one in double-digit digs with 10. Marquette's high is Wurch with seven. Or actually, Kanabinov has nine, so. Marquette really needs to turn it around here in the third set, but we've seen it happen before. Against Wisconsin earlier on this year, they lost the first two frames and then came back in the third. They were down at match point many times. But they rallied back, took the third set, took a tough fourth set, and then blew them out in the fifth. Yeah, they're going to have to figure something out to get back into that history point and use it to their advantage for Marquette. That one might, if they can get this win here tonight, Dan, and do something, replicate what they did in Madison, it'll be this, one of the bigger wins. On, it, might be the, it will be the biggest win of the season for Marquette, and that Wisconsin win will be number two. As a team, Marquette hitting just 137 today. Creighton hitting 268. Really does, and Creighton just. Do that here in the third set. So John, if you're if you're Marquette here, what's the key to winning this third? You got to figure out the scheme at the line. Creighton has just done everything at the line to take all to give all of the blocks on the offensive side for Marquette. So figure something out there at the scheme, but also got to be protective and calm on your aggressive attacks. You just they just did not work for Marquette in the second set. So Creighton trying to sweep Marquette on the road. Marquette the favorite to win the Big East this year, but Creighton, a historically great program. And 
They have always, always been a power in the Big East, and they're yeah. showing that tonight. They are, and they're one of the teams that Marquette just not able to get any success against. They, their last win is since is in 2017, and that feels ancient from now, Dan. So Marquette is, has to get back on the winning side of again in this series because they know both teams know they'll fa they'll find themselves facing each other in the playoffs. So we're set to resume play here. Creighton will serve. It'll be Jayla Zimmerman back, 6'2", sophomore outside hitter. Sports hero is Dwayne Wade. Marquette grad. He was. Yeah. Marquette capitalizes right on the first point. Speckman, Barber, it's easy. Hey, bread and butter. That's what Marquette has been able to have a lot of success in so far this season. So you stay with that and try to get a lead from that. Davis sends one down the line, and Speckman had no idea which way to go. Yeah, Speckman probably should have just let that one go. I think it would have led to a Marquette point. I think it had enough that one speed was on in. that. It was it. That one was well, definitely From my in. angle, it was the little guy in the camera sitting in the chair was a little bit in my way, mm -hmm. so. No. Excuses. Davis serving now. Marquette goes back to Barber, but Witt is there. Her teammates couldn't handle it afterward, though. It wasn't good enough pass. Yeah, it wasn't. And Marquette just got to take advantage of being overly aggressive on those on those serves in the sets, but you know. Kanabadov serves. Back row attack from Zimmerman. Speckman got a hand on it, but that one was too much heat. Yeah. 2-2. Two, two. Now it's Ballinger. Team's really just trading points here throughout the first couple. Gwyn Jones. On the tip kill, veteran play. Yeah, and that's what she's been doing all night. The veteran play, just a little bit of a push over, over the net and find no, and put it into the area of the court that nobody's there. When they expect you to take a full swing and you just tip one over, it's yeah. there's typically not a defender right there in the middle. Hey, gotta, gotta fool the opponent if you wanna win. Moser sets one up to Jones, tip kill again, but Creighton had someone there that time. And the Marquette blockers sent that one just over Vandenberg, so we're all knotted up at three. The Moser sisters now in. Claire and Madeline, setter and opposite hitter. Lucky service ace for Madeline Cole. It hit the tape and fell right in the spot where Hope Wurch wasn't. Yeah, Wurch tried to get there, just wasn't there in enough time. Wurch had it dug up. Zimmerman. Mosier to Mosier. Kostelak, big swing. But it was blocked. Bressman with a nice dig. Kostelak had it blocked, and it's a Marquette point. Hope Wirtz and Gwyn Jones block party. Yeah, that's a block party for sure. Just able to put everything into the other side of the net. Get this game tied once again. Good job there. Veteran play helps Marquette. Wirtz, short serve, just under the hands of the Creighton defender. Tice is upset about something. I don't know what it is, but. Yeah, I'm not sure either. Even before that serve, he was uh, chirping a little bit with the side judge. Creighton mishandled the serve again, so it's a free ball. Vandenberg splits the block. Marquette yeah. now a two-point advantage, six T to four. Talk about a player who's really 
made a big impact quickly in her freshman season. Hannah Vandenberg getting her first start against Seton Hall a couple weeks ago. Gets a big block there, big set, big attack. Another free ball comes Marquette's way. Mosier going to get a swing. Witt brought it up, a miscommunication in the Creighton front line. And it's 7-4 Marquette. Yeah, miscommunication hurting Mark Creighton now. And it's going to lead them into a timeout. And Marquette has a big lead here. And they're going to have to continue holding on to it, Dan, because we know this Creighton team, they're going to be fighting to the very end. So Creighton takes their first timeout. I think it might be their first timeout of the match. Is that right? Or I no, the Creighton called one timeout last. Did it? Okay. He did, yeah. So Marquette on a 4-0 scoring run, 7-4, the Golden Eagles lead. Madeline Moser has been an important piece for the Golden Eagles so far today. She hasn't exactly played all that much so far this year, but that's mostly because of the dominance of Eldie Kuntz and Hannah Vandenberg at the opposite spot. So Moser coming in now when it makes a difference. She is a senior. She knows what it's like to play in these high-level Big East contests. And when she's hot, may as well feed her. Yeah, you might as well feed her for sure. And these are the games that you have to rely on experience, senior leadership to get the win that you're, you're fighting for. You work for all in practice throughout the week. And, you know, Moser has made a big impact here tonight. And it might seem a little superficial, but her setter right now is her sister. Yeah. And sometimes that's all that it takes to they, build and they a have, connection. They have the experience. They played with each other. So, you know, fall back on the experience and history. Creighton sends a free ball over. Someone was in the net. Hannah Vandenberg was in the net. And that's just that's disappointing for Marquette. Yeah, it You is. can't have a net violation no, he, at this point. When you're really fighting to keep this lead, you just can't give any easy points to Creighton. All right, I think that, that might have been actually a double contact. That was the that was the call. But Creighton gives the point right back on a service error. So yeah, it was technically a ball handling error or double contact against Claire Moser, the setter. I saw the two held up and assumed that it was net violation against Vandenberg. Davis somehow puts that one down, despite an awkward set. Creighton's really been struggling on the serve receive so far in this third frame, and Marquette has to take advantage of that. They sure do, and Creighton took advantage of some weaknesses in the first set against Marquette, so Marquette just has to do the same thing here. Moser got blocked. Double contact against Moser once again. And if you're a setter, that just absolutely cannot happen. Yeah, it can. Your whole game revolves around the set with two hands. You can't have a double contact. Vandenberg off the block. Nine to eight, Golden Eagles lead. Yeah, Vandenberg just with the blocks. Her and Orv have done a great job here tonight. And Ali Barber not in the field for Marquette. So when these two, when Barber's not here next year. Those two will be big at the line with the blocks. John, I don't think Marquette wants to envision that. Well, no, but, you, you know, they're, they're showing a lot of promise so far, Dan. Let's, let's, let's say it that way. Creighton put one right in the back corner. Keely Davis did. 9-8 to eight Marquette leads in the third set. I'm Dan Edmonton alongside John Leuzzi here at the Almaguire Center. Marquette trails 2-0 to nothing to the Creighton Blue Jays. Marquette blockers got up and put it down. Wow. Elizabeth Orth and Hannah Vandenberg. If you asked me coming into today's game, Dan, I, I might those two might be not be the top players I would give you for key players to today's game, but they certainly have been. Vandenberg put that one off the tape. Big dig from Lawrence Beckman. Vandenberg got blocked. Orf tried to have a tip kill. Orf once again at the net. Elizabeth Orf 
throwing a block party out here, John. She really is, and I love her energy that she's bringing on the court right now. When she gets that point, she puts all the energy into excitement. That's the kind of player Coach Tyson wants to have on the court to energize and keep this team going. Vandenberg service error. That's Marquette's first of the frame. Chesso's gonna come in, Vandenberg comes out. 11 to nine, Marquette leads in the third frame. Marquette giving Vandenberg a bit of a break and going to a more defensive lineup. Witt able to bring that one back up. Zimmerman, back row. Shesso, another nice dig. She's had a couple today. Barber off the hands of the blockers. Put one down in front of Brittany Witt. That's a great swing there by Barber. Just find it and put it in the area of the core that Creighton had nobody there. And she just swings it so hard that nobody can get there quickly enough to put it back in there. 12 to 9, Marquette up. Cole could not handle the pass. And it's 13 9, Marquette leads in set number three. And this Creighton team, Dan, the they're putting some fight into it, but there's not the same fight they've been showing the past two sets. Marquette's been serving really aggressively, and it's shown in the serve receive. Barber going to get a swing. Witt brings it up. Jones. Improvisation from Creighton. Dump from Speckman. Kanavadov tripped up Lauren Speckman right there. Just an unfortunate play. Great dig yeah, from Kanavadov. Unfortunate there. Speckman just ran over and fell on top of Kanavadov. That was a good rally there by Marquette to try to put it up back up in there. 13-10. Marquette fighting for their lives here. Hope Wirtz off the quick set from Lauren Speckman. 14-10. Wirtz gets her second kill of the day. Now you're really hoping for no service error here from from uh, Sarah Rose, so who really hasn't been strong with the servers. Today just has not been her day from the service line. As Jones meets Cole at the net. Marquette up 15-10. That's a veteran play there again by Jones. Just to put it off, she got her fight there with, jo with Cole and just won it. Big swing from Kostelak, but Shesso gets it up. Mosier forces a free ball from Creighton. Hope Wirtz, I don't know how she didn't hit the net on that yeah. one. Oh, she did. She did. That's going to uh, be a net violation against Hope Wirtz. I'm going to think Tyson's going to have to challenge this. He, I don't know if you can challenge the, net, challenge the net violation here. Oh. The high judge called a net violation. Tells you how much I know the sport of volleyball. <laughs> that was just uh, an unfortunate one for Marquette. I, the way Wirtz was positioned, it looked like she had to hit the net. So that's why I figured it was a net violation before the call was even made. Witt can't handle the slide. Gwyn Jones really making her presence felt at the net yeah, today. she really is. She's able to use that trans all of her experience from Auburn Bring it here today. Her and Vandenberg, Vandenberg, along with Orf, have been great parts of this Marquette team tonight. 16-11. Hickman got it brought up by Wirtz. Vandenberg. Zimmerman took the swing, and Rose got a hand on it, but yeah. it went down. She just was not able to hold on to it and not able to control that swing there from the Creighton player. And if you're, if you're an outside hitter, you're going after the setter every yeah. time. Not a great pass from Wirtz. Davis, big swing, but it goes out. Marquette point, 17-12. Golden Eagles lead in the third. Biggest lead of the night so far for the Golden Eagles. Up by five now, but you just have to continue the momentum, keep the fight going, Dan, because... Creighton's going to be fighting back for sure. It's an uphill battle. It is. And you're already down 2-0, so you're already digging yourself into a big hole. 
I like the volleyball pun there with a dig. Thank you. Marquette can't handle the slightly strange I don't, I don't even know what that could be considered right yeah. there. Marquette just, they hit it like four times and yep. nobody was in the proper spot. And just bad communication. Mosier took a big swing, but the block was there. Keeley Davis and Ballinger were right there on the net. 17-14. And leads only down to three now for Marquette. You gotta figure something out here to build it up back. Vandenberg's gonna get it. Off the blocker, but Davis was there for the dig. Kanavadov can't get it back up. Tice is gonna take a timeout. 17-15 Marquette lead, but Creighton now on a 3-0 scoring run. I think it's the right call here by Tice to call the timeout. When Creighton has all the momentum, you're trying to freeze the momentum and bring the momentum back onto the side for your own team. The lead was up by five, now it's only down by two. And Marquette's gonna have to figure out something quickly, Dan, if they wanna continue getting the, the, in hopes of winning the set to make it go to a fourth set. Yeah, if they wanna continue this match, they've gotta figure yeah. it out right now. This Otherwise, this is the biggest they're in test. trouble. This is the biggest test of the night for Marquette coming out of this timeout. Graydon's only down by 10 to win this set. Marquette's only a little bit closer, but they got to figure it out from now because it all starts now, the final stretch to the win. And this is also the biggest game of the year. Yes, it is. At least at home. I mean, the teams yeah. are going to meet again at DJ Sokol Arena in Omaha later this year. But, but there this you is super important for conference playoffs. Dominance in the Big East. Whoever wins this one is pretty much the favorite to win the Big East. Yeah, it is. And, you, and now for Marquette, you have all your home fans here to use to your advantage. It's a tough atmosphere to play here in the Al, and you hopefully you can get a win here because you know when you head out to Omaha later on in the season, Creighton is going to have all their fans, and they're going to be using that to their advantage as well. This game does show you that Creighton can never be counted That's out. That's true. Even if they're yeah, even if they're not the favorited. second team in yeah preseason poll, they are always always potent. It's a testament to why they're such a great team. Great coaching staff also. Cole shanks that one, and Marquette gets the point. Yeah. Speckman and Barber coming back on. Good timing for the Golden Eagles for sure. And you now you get your bread and butter for the entire season. Maybe not tonight, but for the entire season. Back in the game, try to get those next seven points in hopes of a win. Speckman serving. Cole with the quick set. Barber has it dug up by Witt. Davis, tip kill, finds the floor. Yeah, Ali Barber just not able to get there in enough time. A weird fall to the ground there from the senior. Smart move by Keely Davis to tip that one over yeah. take it, instead of taking the full swing. John, this place has certainly quieted down. Yeah. It was exciting in the intros and all, but just has gone down. Barber went cross. Free ball over to the Golden Eagles. Marquette goes back to Barber, uses the outside hands of the blocker. Good 19 job. 16 Golden Eagles. Great job there by Barber to find the outside hands and put it right there, right around the line where. Creighton really wasn't able to get down to the ground to save it in there. Back row attack for Zimmerman. Wow, that was a perfect placement from Jayla Zimmerman. Yep. She noticed nobody in the middle of the floor for the Golden Eagles and used that to her advantage. That's been a struggle for Martha Kanavanov throughout the entire season also, Dan. She likes to play the back of the line, but like, she leaves a lot of open space there for a team to use to their advantage. Sometimes there's nothing she can do about yeah. it in the rotation. That's just not her spot, but Creighton now back within one. It's 19-18 off the service ace. Marquette in trouble. They still have one timeout for Marquette to still use, but you're, in, you're really hoping not to use that here, Dan. Quick set from Speckman. Wirtz slams it down. 
2018 Marquette. Kostelak and Bressman are back on. Davis and Nelson go off. Cole puts it up for Ballinger. Barber got a hand on it, and then so did Wirch, but nobody was in the middle after that. Yeah, Ballinger just go there with a strong swing, and Wirch just not able to hold the ground and help put that back in there. Vandenberg, Speckman to Barber, and that one hit off Cole's hands and found the ground. Unfortunately for Marquette, Barber and Speckman are going off. Mosier, Madeline Mosier, that is, and Sarah Rose enter. Marquette has used all three setters pretty commonly today. Kostelak put it directly between the hands of Wirch and Jones, and it's 21 to 20. Yeah, it's a, it's a dog fight to the end. It's a real battle. See who wins here tonight in Milwaukee. Jones on the slide. Free ball. Over to Mosier. Off the hands of the blocker. 22 to 20. Great job by Mosier to just get it enough to get it off the blocker and for the point. For Madeline Mosier. Big swing from Zimmerman. That was touched. Wow. 22 to 21. It went out, but that was because yeah. Marquette Blockers got yeah. a hand on it. A lot of fans were not happy about the call, but you could clearly tell it took a different trajectory from the hand. Vandenberg out of system. Somehow, Keeley Davis ties the game up from way back in the back row. Yeah, she put it in the spot where Kanabinov just simply couldn't get to it. Yeah, she couldn't get there anywhere. Now Tice is really going to have to draw something up here in, in the timeout. No more timeouts of this set. You're down. You're now tied. You had a big lead. All the momentum has changed again, Dan. That's something my Marquette cannot afford to happen. Not at all. Marquette trying not to get swept by the Creighton Blue Jays. We got number 10 versus number 13, and it's coming down to the wire here in the third set. Marquette lost the first one, 25-21, and the second, 25-23. And here we are, tied at 22 in the third. Marquette fighting to stay alive. Creighton wants to get out of here as soon as possible. Yeah, they want to head back out to Omaha with the win for a sweep of the weekend. You get that, also getting that first seed in the Big East. And if they sweep, they only go up in the rankings. Yeah. Because Marquette, number 10, so they'll have to go down. Creighton will go above Marquette. But for your Marquette, you're trying to make this game go as long as you can. Got to get all the momentum back in your part. Got to have good sets, good digs, good attacks, and of course, good momentum and good communication. Marquette is stuck in their rotation without Madeline Mosier and Sarah Rose. No Ali Barber or Lauren Speckman right now. And yeah, that might hurt them here. Kostelak. Double contact against Sarah Rose. 23 to 22, Marquette trails. Moser just barely gets it back over. Vandenberg block. And that is sent way over. That totally should have been a double contact. Yeah, it should have. I don't know why. Tice is really arguing, as he should.
And just like that, it's match point. That's a bad call there from the official. Marquette needs to turn it around. Service error. That's a good start. Gwyn Jones, the middle blocker to serve. You bring Elizabeth Orff now up in the front of the line at the net. Her and Vandenberg have done a great job at the net so far with the blocks. Just hoping that it work works here again. Jones. Davis. And that's Marquette point. And Creighton is almost positive that was a touch. Yeah, and the uh, other side officials gave, gave a little bit of a smile saying, yeah, you're probably right. Either a touch or that it was in. So, as if it stands, it's 24-24, but Creighton seems pretty positive yeah. that this match is over. Yeah, they do, and you know, it all comes down to replay. Who thought a couple years ago replay would determine a game, Dan? I certainly didn't, John. Yeah, been a big part of the professional sports making their way into collegiate now. Before we know, we'll be in high school. So, the referee still over deciding. Whether or not it was inbounds. And it's Creighton point. And it's a sweep. Hold on. Oh. Oh. Wow. The call stands. Oh, my. That, what a communication by the official. <laughs> and that changed this, the, all the momentum and the excitement. Creighton was cheering for a win. They were ready to walk out. And Elizabeth Orford said, no, no, no. We got the point. Well, that's a turn of events. It's 24-24. Davis puts one off the hands of Sarah Rose. 25-24, Creighton up. I cannot believe that. Yeah, I can't either. The official made the wrong call on what almost decided the game. Thankfully, Tyson was at the table. Mosier, big swing. That one got sent into the student section. Yeah, it did, and then he got this fan section, this entire pit all excited again. Everybody's up on their feet. This is the momentum Marquette needs to use to their advantage. Feed off of the excitement from their fans. Men's lacrosse player Zach Granger caught that one. Yeah. He was happy. Barber and Speckman come on. 25-25, win by two. Davis slams it down, middle of the floor. 26-25, Creighton Blue Jays. Zimmerman. Marquette goes to Barber. Net violation, Marquette point. Man, this is what we've been waiting for all day, to see a back and fight game, back, back and forth game, rather. Back and forth fight. Yeah. Vandenberg serving, 26-26. Back row attack, Marquette point. Set point for the Golden Eagles. And Marquette up to get in the lead. This is the biggest lead, and it's going to lead to a Creighton timeout. But Dan, going all the way back to what they, when the official made that call, Creighton was confident that they were going to win. They, they celebrated as a win, and that got into their heads, and Marquette is feeding off of that. That's a good job by Tice's team to use that to their advantage, but also stay calm in the moment. So let's go back. It was 25 to 23. Yeah. No, 24, 24, 23. 24-23, yeah. right. Marquette was down. Keeley Davis sent one out of bounds. Yep. Kirsten Bernthal Booth challenged. The ref originally said that it was Creighton Point. Yeah. And then went back to the judge at the table, and he said, no, 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 no. 
Wrong call. And that's still Marquette point. Thankfully, Coach Tice was right at the net yeah, at the table because when they were doing the replay. Creighton started celebrating yeah. as if it was an upset. Blue Jays point, and they went to the net, and everyone was on the court. And then the judge says, "No, no, no, that's Marquette point." Yeah. So Marquette didn't need to go up to the net and shake hands. They're still in it, and now it's 27-26. Marquette advantage, Hannah Vandenberg at the service line. It's Orff, Wirch, Barber, Speckman, Kanavadoff, and Vandenberg for the Golden Eagles. Marquette trying to take set three. They're gonna go back to Keeley Davis. And Vandenberg shanked it. Yeah, Vandenberg just could not have put her hand there, leading that to a tie now. Keeley Davis is so strong. She, sent, she sends some of these Probably at about yeah. 75 miles per hour. I, I wish we had a radar gun out here so that we could clock it. I wish I had the app on my phone still. Uh, 27 all. Keely Davis service error. That's a good job by Martha Konominov to step back and use that veteran look. And just let the point go to Marquette. Smart play there by the junior. 28-27. Marquette leads Konominov to serve. Kostelak swings, Marquette gets it back up. Barber can't find the floor, free ball. Kanavadov, Speckman. Wirtz can't get it on the ground. Barber, another swing. Witt puts it up. Bressman hustling. Barber once again tries to tip it over. Kostelak into the net. Marquette takes set three. What a win by Marquette in set three. They kept calm, they kept in the moment when they looked like they were gonna lose. That's a good test and good to it. That's a good job by the coaching staff, Dan, to keep them in the moment. And they served that and they digged it. They dug a win out of that set. I have goosebumps, John. I do. That I was do crazy. Too. I feel like it oh, just man. it was like the last shot in like the NCAA yeah. men's tournament. This entire pit just used that and they're up and they're alive. I know I was woken by the by their excitement. And this Marquette team, they got some fire in them now, Dan. We're we're in for a good set four. I... Marquette has some life. <laughs> wow. wow. After they lost the first two sets. Almost lost the third on a missed call. Marquette takes set number three, 29 to 27, on an attack error by Erica Kostelak. This is the beauty of sports. You can't script a game for anything. There are so many unexpected things to come. When you thought Marquette was down 2 nothing going to set three, it was going to be a tough set three. But they, they, they put themselves into it, and they made a win out of it. Man, that's why they're the number 10 team in the country, Dan. Ugh. Resilience. Yeah. That's the story of this game. So far, at least. Yeah. So, as far as stats go, Keely Davis up to 18 kills. Barber has 14 to lead the Golden Eagles. For Creighton, also two other players in double digits. Jayla Zimmerman with 12. Erica Kostelak with 11. Marquette hit 326 in the third set to bring up their overall average to 210. Creighton only three blocks, no, two blocks since that first set, John. Wow. That's big. Yeah, that's big for Marquette. They were able to adjust to it. They, that's something that they struggled in the first set, Dan, and Tice drew something up in strategy. They were able to figure something out to get into this Creighton head to fight back. I'm really surprised that Creighton hasn't had Keely Davis in the game as often as yeah. I thought. She has 18 kills. When she's in, the, she just swings so hard. Marquette is not able to hold on to it and trying to put it back up in the air and put it on the other side of the net. She's a bit like Yossiana Presley for Baylor. Yeah. Super high jump, really great swings, puts them down on the floor where nobody can get to them. She's very similar. Also in stature, they're, they're not the tallest outside hitter. They're not Ali Barber at 6'5", yeah. but... Another comparison, Efersani Alexa Koo. Oh, for St. John's? St. John's, yeah. yeah. Big she, jump. She was big jump, and she swung hard to get for the Johnnies, and 
she put the Johnnies into that first set there for that win, but Marquette fought back to, into there, and they're, Marquette is fighting their way back, and this is a big set. They have to, they're trying to tie it here to go into set five like they did against Wisconsin. So Marquette on our left, Creighton on the right. Marquette rocking their white jerseys over the Navy spandex. Creighton has their blues. Your signature blues. That classic Creighton blue, John. Yeah. Set number four, underway. And Kostelak goes cross, hits the line, one nothing Creighton. Yeah, Kostelak just got it in enough time there to get one bounce inside before it went into the Marquette bench. Kostelak. Marquette almost got it over. Yeah. It was uh, it was mishandled by a couple different players, and then Kanavadov just kind of flailed her arm at it and tried to put it over, but it hit the tape and came right back at her. Yeah, Marquette just can't let the momentum on all the fire just get away. They got to fight their way through here, set by set. Vandenberg, wow, slammed that one to the ground. Talk about a freshman impact. She's made a big impact here tonight. The bench liked that one. Yeah, they did. KJ Lines liked that a lot. They pulled off a spin move line. As Vandenberg gets a service ace, that was uh, that one just kind of went off the hands of Jayla Zimmerman. It's a lot like when you're a pitcher and your glove is just broken too much. It just went right through butter hands. Butter hands. Butter hands. Wow. Not butter fingers. Not hands. butter hands. Butter hands. Whole Not, hands. Yeah. Marquette sends a free ball. Davis is going to need to send one right back. That one would have gone out of bounds, but Knavadov brought it back in. But that's no worry because Hope Wirch put one right where. Creighton couldn't handle it and it went into the student section. Worked for the win there to put it right in there for a lot of a lot of swing on that, a lot of power on that swing. She's still hitting in the negatives. Negative 111. Ooh. Service error now from Vandenberg and 3-3. Three, three. Kanavadov. Beckman, Orf, Zimmerman gets it up. Barber gets a swing on the outside. Davis, off the awkward set. Barber out of system. She's able to she, get it off the outside hands of the blocker. She might have been out of system, Dan, but she wasn't out of purpose there. She was knew what she had to do there with the block to get it off of one of the Creighton players to get a Marquette point. Barber gets blocked by Hickman. Yeah, Hickman just having a blocking day there at the line for this Creighton team. They did, Marquette that's, hasn't been able to figure her out today, but they've been able to figure out a couple other players, but that's block number eight on wow. the day for Hickman. 42 on the season. Jones got blocked by Davis, but Marquette gets it back. Barber, tip kill. Back row attack from Bressman. And Gwyn Jones on the block. I guess that, I don't know if that's technically a block or a kill, but it's a point from Marquette regardless. It's a block. They ruled block, even though the announcer said yeah. kill. Public address announcer. Not us announcers. No. Hickman on the slide, out of bounds. Haven't seen her be an offensive dynamo exactly. No, we're not really. She's now hitting zero. One kill, one error on yeah. seven attacks. Yeah. 
Rose. Davis is going to get a big swing, blocked. And Marquette put, got their blockers up. There were four hands in Davis's face, but she did a nice job of elevating above them and putting it off the top. Jones got blocked on the slide. Solo block for Erica Kostelak, and it is 6-6. Six, six. Yeah, Creighton's not stopping. They're giving a fight to the end for, against this Marquette team. John, you said it earlier. This is a dog fight. Yeah, it is. Wirch, great decision to not just put it right into the block. Yeah. But put it over on the tip kill. That's a smart play there. That's a veteran play there by Wirch. Just do a little, not didn't have to go so hard there. Just did a little bit. Nice little easy pass. Kostelak swung, but Wirch was able to get it, or Rose was able to get it up, actually. Quick set to Naomi Hickman. Goes back corner. Yeah. 7-7. Seven, seven. Hickman just went back corner. She saw Wirch not there enough time, and Wirch tried to go there, but her dive just not enough to put her hands up in the air to save that. Brittany Witt now serving. Off the top of the tape. Vandenberg on the outside. Off the blockers. Marquette lead again. Her seventh kill of the day, if I see stats correctly on your computer, because mine just not working anymore. Yours closed down, John? Yeah, stats broadcast just did not want to work for me. Disappointing. Yeah. Quick set. Ballinger off the hands of Sarah Rose. Cole's done a really nice job of varying her options today. There's a reason why she's an All-American, John. Yeah, there is. Last year led the Big East with 10.92 assists per set. This year has 10.7. Another block for Ballinger and Kostelak, and Creighton has a 9-8 advantage in the fourth. Yeah, they're having the momentum now on their side. Marquette is going to have to replicate that on theirs if they want to stay in this back and forth game. Ballinger's really had an impact in the past couple plays. Moser, big swing. Kostelak got blocked. Moser and Orff at the net. Orff has just been a monster at the line today at the net. Just coming through key block after key block to put the point in there for Marquette. I just love her excitement, enthusiasm, and the way she holds herself. Barber goes back corner. <laughs> a bit of a miscommunication yeah. for the Golden Eagles. It hit off the top of Orff's hand, and then the top of somebody else's hand, and Barber just pushed it to yeah. the back corner. And she just did what she had to do. She read that she had a good read on that. She able to get the point. Kostelak tried to go middle, and Orff didn't think there was anyone behind her, so yeah. she just Tried well, to tip it up, and it turned out there were people back there, and she put it past them. Yeah, a little miscommunication between Orff and Barber on there. Big dig from Brittany Witt. I thought that one was coming right in my face. You judged it wrong, John? I did. Marquette free ball. Uh, nice save, Dan. Nice catch. Thanks, John. That one came directly to me. Off the hands of Lawrence Beckman. That's why you were a great baseball player. In the Thanks, day. John. That's the kill number 20 for Kaylee Davis. And catch number one for Dan. Dan one, ball zero. Allie Barber matches Davis. 11-11.
So all tied up at 11 in set number four. I'm Dan Abington alongside John Leuza here at the Almaguire Center. Marquette really improving the block yeah. so far today. And that time, Orf and Wirtz were there. 12-11 Marquette lead. That's block seven for Elizabeth Orf. Wow. They've, they've progressed throughout this entire game with the blocks at the line. First set, they struggled a lot, not so much in the second and third. Service error for Hannah Vandenberg. So Shesso will come on to play back row. She'll play right, center, and left back, and then yeah. Vandenberg utility. will rotate back utility in. Utility player, Dan. All volleyball players are utility, John. That's true. Man, Barber packed some heat on that one. Went off the hands of a, of a DS and into section 115. Yeah. 13-12 Golden Eagles. I would not be one, I would not want to be, be the player going against Ali Barber with those swings. Madeline Cole tried to dump it over, but Gwyn Jones gets both of her hands in her face and puts it on the ground. 14-12. This, this team has been able to feed off of the excitement ever since that, towards the end of that third set. And see a different Marquette team on the court right now, Dan. Davis slams it down. 14-13. Keely Davis from a really athletic family. Brother played football and track. Her mom played soccer and basketball in college. Quite the jeans coming at her there. Yeah. Barber sent one to the back again. You know another family that has a lot of athletic jeans? Martha Konovadov. That's right. Yeah. All of her siblings have played D1 sports. Fifteen thirteen after Barber got the point. Sarah Rose serving. She came on for Speckman. Good hustle from the Golden Eagle. Shesso gets it over. Zimmerman. Moser out of system. Davis, back row attack. Uses the block. Yeah. 15-14, a couple good digs from Sarah Rose there. That was but a good rally there by the Golden Eagles, especially Wirtz diving into the side tables here just to put, keep it the ball in the air. Good job by Shesho. Did I say that right that time? Shesso. Shesho. Shes oh. All right, we'll get it better next time. Shes oh. Good job by her, though, too. <laughs> Moser didn't have a chance there. There were blockers right in her face. And all of a sudden, we're tied at 15. Yeah, it's, keep on, I'm going to keep on saying it. It's a dogfight to the end. You can figure out who, it's going to be a blood bash. Uh, blood bath? Blood, yeah, that, I just mixing up my words a little bit tonight. <laughs> It's all right, John. We all have our days. Jones tip kill on the slide. Witt was there. Davis back row. Jones and Moser are there. That's block number 11 for the Golden Eagles. And that's what's keeping them in this game. They're able to figure out. They're able to figure out a weakness that they saw in the first set. They were able to make it a strength of theirs in the ever since. Wirtz now serving. Kostelak. Great dig by, by Kanavadov, and Marquette sends a free ball. Rose dig. Kanavadov set. Wirtz back row attack right into the net. There were six hands yeah. up there. And Wirtz just, she saw all those hands and had no chance. Yeah, they could not get through Hickman there. She's just been a wall f for Creighton today. Now she's off the court for the Blue Jays, so Marquette has to use that to their advantage. Hickman and Davis both off. Kostelak, big swing, it's out. 17-16 Marquette on the attack error by Kostelak. I don't know how Kostelak is able to play with that kind of breeze she has on. It, 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 it looks like she has a bionic leg. Yeah, it really does. She has a it, sleeve underneath the brace. The brace is basically taking away her entire leg. Service error by Gwyn Jones. But yeah, John, I, I was wondering the same thing in warm-ups. I don't know how she's able to get that much mobility in yeah. her legs while she's wearing a brace like she's that. Able it, to, she was able to bend that a lot mm -hmm. in the air just now. 
technology. Yeah, sports medicine. Miscommunication by Madeline Cole and Brittany Witt. Yeah. And Mosier able to get a tip kill. That's nine kills for Madeline Mosier on the day. Ooh. Nine kills, two blocks. She's been a big player for Marquette tonight. Speckman and Barber back on. Kostelak tip. Wurch there on the hustle play. Wurch is going to push this one. Cole goes behind her. Ballinger back corner. 18-18, fourth set. Marquette and Creighton, number 10 versus number 13 at the Al McGuire Center. First top 15 matchup in the history of the Al. And Marquette trying to fight back from down 2-0. Miscommunication there by Vandenberg and Konominov. Creighton has the lead, 19-18, Blue Jays up. Can't do that one, especially when it's the last straw, the last drive to the, that first to 25, and that's the quickest one can win. Quick set, it's out. Orff didn't get a proper hand on it. Tice is going to use a challenge. I don't know if he's going to win this one, Dan. He's challenging if there was a touch. Okay. So he's not challenging if it was in or out, but. It's the last challenge for Tice. But I guess if you get this point, it's a big momentum yeah, swing. Instead it is. of being down by two, he's down by one. So he's hopefully. No, they're tied. Yeah, right. It would be tie game. Good math, John. <laughs> That's why I'm not majoring in math. Right. So it's, if the call stands, it's 2018, otherwise 1919. But Creighton trying to take this matchup, trying to take a 3 1 win home to Omaha. Marquette, if they win this set, we're going to a fifth. And they play the fifth set to 15. Yeah. For anybody unfamiliar with volleyball. The Golden first Eagle. four are to 25, win by two, and the fifth set is to 15. I was just interviewed by the Golden Eagle over here. How was it? How it was, was good. the interview? Good? I told them we're going to get a win. I feel a win. I feel a win for Marquette tonight. Interesting. Yeah. I, I feel Bold like... Bold call with the score currently. Well, I think if they can get the momentum change here, I think it's going to do something to them. They're going to be able to feed a lot off of, this, of these fans here tonight. So... As first things as, first, this challenge has to go in Marquette's right, favor. Right, that's what I was going to say. But as far as the stats go, Davis now up to 22 kills. Barber with 19 for a Marquette team lead. 13 for Costalac, 12 for Zimmerman. Marquette's next highest besides Barber is Mosier. It's still Creighton point. Challenge, no good. So Tice is out of challenges. Twenty to eighteen, Creighton leads. 3-0 scoring run for the Blue Jays. Marquette needs to get some momentum now. Kanavadov, Speckman, to Barber tried the tip, but Witt was there. Ballinger gets one into the back corner. Twenty-one eighteen, timeout. Ryan Tyson, Marquette. Yeah. You have to call a timeout here. You're down by three now. You had a little bit of a lead at one point during this fourth set. But down by three, try to freeze whatever Creighton is doing right now in this game in hopes of not only switching the momentum, but get something going here with the attacks in hopes of a win here in the fourth set and leading to a fifth set, Dan. So the Blue Jays on a 4-0 scoring run to make it 21-18. Creighton leads Marquette. Golden Eagles trying to force a fifth set. It's been an uphill battle since the first yeah. for the Golden Eagles. They weren't able to capitalize on six service errors from Creighton in the first. And then in the second, they had six service errors of their own. Yeah, the Marquette lost the first set 25-21, but they just fell short in the second set, losing 25-23. And they obviously won that third set 29-27, leading us here into the fourth set. So it's first to 25, win by two, in case you haven't noticed that by now. 
Marquette trying to give themselves some life here in the fourth set. They can force a fifth. That'd be pretty big, John. Yeah, it would. They can get they can get a service error here that Creighton typically has done coming out of timeouts. It'd be a good mo momentum start. Kostelak's gonna serve. Good serve. And Barber forces Kostelak to have a bit of an out-of-system play. Barber gets another swing. It was blocked. Keely Davis blocked. It's out. 22-18. Creighton lead. This one's slipping away from the Golden Eagles. And they guys hold their ground. They're playing on their home court. Do everything they can to get back into this game. Down by four now. 5-0 scoring run for the Blue Jays. Vandenberg goes cross. 22-19. One in down. Go to the hottest player from today. Hannah Vandenberg has done a great job today, along with Elizabeth Orff. I don't know. I, I, I... She's played well. Yeah, that's played for sure. Well. But hottest is a bit of a yeah. questionable call. Wirch gets a swing. And that one went all the way back over the net on the dig. 22-20. Marquette not out of it just yet. Vandenberg. Cole sends it over to Davis. Marquette somehow keeps it up. Three ball. They're going back to Davis. You can guarantee it. Yep. Blocked by Wirch. Davis again. And that time it was tipped by Wirch and out of bounds. Keely yep. Davis is just phenomenal. And she's the person that this Creighton team has to go to to get the points and just rely on. She's been a big part of their success here tonight, along with Hickman at the line with the blocks. And now she's back in the game. So two of the toughest players for Creighton are back on the court for Marquette. McKenna Krause comes on. Serve specialist. And yet, it's an error. Yeah, Krause just not able to get the job done there in that, in that server. Kanavadov now serving for the Golden Eagles. 23-21. Marquette really needs to rattle off some points here. Hickman. Speckman tried to go back corner. Wirch gets a swing. It's into the student section. 23-22. Yeah. Good job by Speckman to go to Wirch there. It didn't work with her, just herself the last time. So she goes to Wirch. Wirch able to go up with a strong swing. Goes into the student section. Marquette only down by one now. 23-22. Creighton leads here in the fourth set. Marquette trying to take it to five. Whew, this one's been a roller coaster. Yeah, it really has. It's lived up to the expectations. The first set, first and second set, just it wasn't the same Marquette team that we saw in the past couple games, but they woke up towards the end of the second set. They showed it in the third set, and they've made it a dogfight to the end. Davis up to 24 kills. Barber at 19 for the Golden Eagles. But... Normally in these situations, Marquette just keeps going back to Barber. Yeah. Anytime Speckman will go right over to Barber. But you have to switch it up here. It, they've done really well yeah. so far here because Speckman went to Wirch. She went to Vandenberg. She went to, I think it was Jones in the past couple points. So Marquette making sure that it's a, it's a well-oiled machine on the offense. They have a three-pronged attack. Why not use everybody? Don't, don't show your hand. Yeah, you know... You know, Creighton is going to expect you to go to Barber all the time, so switch it up on their own strategy. So get into their heads to think, oh, we might have to figure something out different to eliminate this player now because Barber is not being used all that time. Wirch is now in the positives. She's at zero yeah. hitting right. percentage. No longer negative. Cole Davis. That's out. 23-23. That's a good read by Lawrence Speckman just to watch the ball go there. Good IQ. That's a, that's a veteran play right there just to let the ball go. 3-0 scoring run for the Golden Eagles. Kanavadov serving. 
Davis. It's dug up by Speckman. Barber free ball. It's going right back to number six. Vandenberg dig. Kanavadov, or Wurch that was, kept it alive. Davis again, blocked. Barber out of system. Back row attack, Jayla Zimmerman. Marquette keeps it up. Barber pushes it. Hickman. Finally, Creighton gets the point. That was a good rally by, by Marquette to keep the ball in the air. Just They went to Hickman. She's just been able to do it all night. Set point, or match point. Yeah. Tice is going to take a timeout. Yeah. Probably smart. I think it is a smart move, as I agree with you, Dan, just to get the strategy, try to calm down this Creighton team who think they have an opportunity to get the set point, the match point here. So it's 24 23. Creighton leads here in the fourth set. Marquette dropped the first two, won the third, 29 27, and now. Golden Eagles fighting for their lives at match point. Marquette, if they can, probably going right to Ali Barber on this one, as I, long as yeah. they're in system. Yeah, you I would, would assume she's going to be the one that gets yep. the attack. And if Creighton gets the ball back. It's going to Davis, for sure. It is 100%. Going back to number six. Keely Davis, 24 kills on the night. She's averaging 2.87 kills per set. Almost a lock for Big East freshman of the year. Yeah. Probably all Big East first team if she continues this trend. In high school, she led her state of California with kills in her senior season. Highlands ran native. So it'll be Madeline Cole serving for the Blue Jays. For Marquette, Kanavadov, Vandenberg, Wurch, Speckman, Barber, and Jones. It's Cole, Bressman, Witt, Davis, Zimmerman, and Hickman for Creighton. Match point. Vandenberg, Speckman, Barber! Bread, butter, point Marquette. 24 24. Barber is serving. You were right, Dan. Prediction was right. Marquette has no setter in now. Madeline Mosier came in at the net. Barber serving. First time all game. Davis. In. 25-24. Just got it in enough time there. Barber out now, interesting. Marquette needed to get the setter back yeah. in for defensive purposes. 25-24, match point again. Davis serving. Wurch. Rose, Mosier. Free ball. Kanavadov, Rose, Wurch. Net violation anyway. Marquette oh, yeah. point. Big point there for Marquette. Woo. Tied game now, Danny. That's, That's right, Josh. That's what we live for. 25-25. Wurch back to serve for the Golden Eagles. Trying to force a fifth set. Kanavadov gets it up. Mosier swing. It hit the pin. Marquette point. 26-25. Golden Eagles advantage. Let's use them. Let them use the excitement and the energy inside this arena to their advantage. Davis is off too. Kostelak splits the block. 26-26. It's a fight. 
It's like a boxing match. You just one punch at a time. A little Rocky, a little, about, a little bit of Apollo in the spectrum. <laughs> That's right, John. Vandenberg got it blocked. Double contact. Oh. Ooh. That was a rough one. Yeah, it's all right. Not only the voice crack, but also the double contact. Yeah. 27-26, Creighton advantage, match point. No Barber, no Davis for Creighton. Jones. It's going to be a free ball. Kanavadov. Rose. Moser had it blocked, but it's out. Jones going to go back to serve, 27-27. You think it's done at one time, but either team just fights back to the end. Kostelak off the tape. Vandenberg going to get a swing. Marquette gets the point. 28 to 27. Yeah. Hannah Vandenberg just going with all her strength and all her speed to go there with the kill. And Creighton just not able to hold on to it. Thankfully for Marquette, got a little tangled up there in the net. It leads to the Blue Jays to getting a timeout. Dan, I would be scared if they're, Mar if they're the Blue Jays. If I was the Blue Jays, rather. 28 to 27. Marquette leads in the fourth set. Whew. No rest in this game. No. It... <laughs> John has said it multiple times, but this is a dogfight. It's a boxing match. Yeah. This is just this an is, incredible game to watch. This is what a top 20, top 15 game is. Two top 20, two top 15 teams. They are top 25. Top you were 25. right the first time. I had but. to get a little bit better in the top 15, and they're known to be a powerhouse volleyball university. This is one of the top three games in the entire country this this weekend, and it's living up to the expectations. So Gwyn Jones back to serve. Jones, Wirtz, Rose, Vandenberg, Mosier, and Orff. Creighton gets the kill. That one hit Sarah Rose right in the chest. Yeah, that has to hurt. Oh. 28-28. Kanavadov now on for the Golden Eagles. Vandenberg! 29-28. Line in down when you don't have Ali Barber on the court. Go to hand of Vandenberg. Vandenberg now with 10 kills on the day. Speckman. Barber, point. That's Kostelak hits the ground. That's a tough dig there for Kanavadov. She Nothing she could do. Yeah. Nothing. She did everything she could. 29-29. That's kill 15 for Erica Kostelak. Davis is in the game now for the Blue Jays, mm -hmm. but no Hickman at the line. Ballinger's turn at middle. Marquette barely gets it over. Net violation. Net violation against Creighton. Yeah. I saw a little bit there. Good job I by saw the, the net other move. official. I, just, I wasn't sure who it was going to go yeah. against. Bressman's in. Kostelak's out. Vandenberg at the service line. 30 to 29. Marquette gets the free ball. Wirch. Net violation. Unbelievable. We're going to five. Oh my God. What a game. What a set. What a match here in the fourth set. Marquette coming back from two down. And Dan, they just erased a 2-0 deficit. Going to a fifth set. 
And all the momentum is in the Golden Eagles. Sheesh. Ugh. Marquette loses the first two and then wins the third 29-27. Wins the fourth 31-29. Oh. They just said we are coin heading toss. to five. We're heading to five. It I was for service. Yeah, that's what the coin yeah. toss was. All right. But anyways, we're heading to a fifth set. And it looks a lot like the Wisconsin game for this Golden Eagles team. But Dan, this is a match heading to the knockout round. This is one for the ages, John. Yeah, it is. Big East, ten versus two. This is not even a playoff game. Unbelievable. This, oh. this might be the best Marquette team in history. Yeah. And Creighton is matching them blow for blow. And this is a lot of, give, gotta give a lot of credit to Ryan Tice and his coaching staff for keeping this team in the game, get down two nothing, heading into the third set. He, they gave confidence to this Marquette team saying, don't worry about what happened in the past two sets. We know what we can do. Just keep on fighting and the game is gonna, show what this what we have as a team and who we are as a team and it certainly has as we're in fifth the fifth set so we're going to five the rules of the fifth set it's played to 15 win by two and they start halfway through so we have about a minute 45 until we see the fifth set john i need a prediction out of you Dan. who wins the fifth set Marquette, they have all the momentum. You think Marquette wins I, if it's set? Yeah, it's not just because I go to this university, but I'm looking into this game. Ever since that third set, there was a little bit of di different fire, different urgency, different energy, different mo motivation in this Marquette Golden Eagles team. They wanted to come back and make a statement here tonight against a Creighton team who they've not had success in in the past couple years, and they know how much talent, how much they can do on the damage. And Dan, I just think that they have it. Barber, Speckman, Vandenberg, Orff, everybody's done their job here tonight. They just got to figure out Davis and, Hick and Hickman, and I think they can get this win. I don't think there's much of an answer to figuring yeah. out Keeley Davis. Yeah. But, but, you just got to stack the back line. You do. You got to be in your proper spots. And you got to go to the bread and butter and the fundamentals that have been working since set three. Get Put Orf, put Vandenberg, put Barber up at the line for the blocks for Marquette and just continue in having faith and just keep on believing. So for Creighton, it's going to be Kostelak. I got a stat for you. Ready? Go ahead, John. This is the fourth time Marquette has played in fifth sets, and they're 3-1 and one in those four games. Only loss was to Illinois. Yep. As I was saying, for Creighton, Ballinger, Cole, Nelson, Zimmerman, that's Kostelak and Witt. For the Golden Eagles, Speckman, Kanavadoff, Wirch, Hannah Vandenberg, Elizabeth Orff, and Aber. We're in for a ride, Johnny. Yeah, we are. Heading up the roller coaster right now. We've reached the peak of the roller coaster. Yep. Fifth set is underway. And that was just a disaster for Marquette. Yeah. They couldn't handle the serve, barely got it over, and then Cole brought it right back down on him. Yep. There's no communication there, unfortunately, for the Golden Eagles. one nothing Creighton. Barber sends one off the hands of the blockers. 1-1. One, one. Vandenberg set to serve. The tension in the building is palpable. Four service errors on the night for, Bar for Vandenberg. She served a lot. Yeah. Kostelak, big swing. Hit the ground. Ekonomenov tried to go there and for the dig, but she couldn't really do anything more. Shesso comes in, Vandenberg goes off. Less offensive threats, more defense. Yeah. Got a whole defense here. Kostelak serving. Shesso 
Speckman. Barber tip. Free ball. Barber off the hand of Erica Kostelak. 2-2. Two -two. That's a good job by Speckman to can hear the read and lead it to Barber and just let everybody else step back for a second and do, let Allie do what she does best. Which team can get the momentum here? That's what it's going to come down to. Yep. Who's willing to fight extra? Davis goes cross. You Nobody just, was there. You just can't stop uh, Davis here. Just unbelievable night here for the freshman. When she's taking her biggest swings, yeah. they're hitting the ground. And when she's pulling up, defense has no idea where to go. Barber out of system. Restman gets it up. Cole. Davis free ball. It's tipped by Jones. And it's a 4-2 Creighton advantage. Yeah, that's a good save there from Cole to lead it up to Davis there for the kill. Regardless of the outcome here, John, this has been a match that everyone will remember. Yes. Free ball from the Golden Eagles. Over to Davis. Shesso's there. Barber going to get a swing. Out. Five to two. Timeout, Marquette. All right. I think it's the right call. You're down by three now. Uh, just trying to get the momentum going. Let, let the team relax a little bit. And just get back to the fundamentals. Davis, 27 kills. Unbelievable. Talk about a day. Yeah. And she's hitting 358. Only eight errors. Oh. As far as stats go, Davis has 27 kills. Kostelak has 16. Zimmerman has 12. Cole has 57 assists. Brittany Witt with 29 digs. For the Golden Eagles, Barber leads with 22 kills. Mocher has 11. Vandenberg has 10. Wirch has 9. Assists. Speckman has 29. Sarah Rose has 18. Kanavadov with 23 digs. 11 for Lauren Speckman. Blocks. Hickman up to 11 for the Blue Jays. 7 for Elizabeth Orff. Marquette combining to hit 167 so far in this set. Creighton hitting an incredible 800 in the fifth. Unbelievable. 254 combined for the Blue Jays. Marquette hitting 233. Wow, 14 blocks for Creighton and 11 of them came from Naomi Hickman. So now Ballinger is serving the middle. They're without a libero right now. Barber tries the tip. Davis tries her own tip. Marquette barely gets it. Davis gets it again. Off the block. 6-2, Creighton leads. 4-0, Blue Jays scoring run. Yeah, you just have Hickman, Davis up there doing all the momentum and all the drive for this Blue Jays team, and Marquette just not able to get something going here. Marquette needs an answer, and fast. And that's the that's answer. That's going to help. Ballinger service error. Yeah. 6-3, and that's going to happen when middle serve. Middle blockers not exactly known for their prowess at the serving line. Mm -hmm. Barber and Speckman off. Rose and Mosier on. Davis had an awkward angle. Wirch dug up by Bressman. Davis improvised in the air and hit the middle of the floor. 7-3. Yeah, she's doing everything for this creating team here tonight. So, uh, as, as, even though you want to try to eliminate her from strategy, you just can't. No. There's no way to stop her. Yeah. 29 kills. That's unheard of. Moser got blocked. Wirch went cross. No touch. We're switching sides. And you're hoping that the changing sides does something to this Marquette team because they're down by five, and they got to get up. They got to get quick. 
Because Creighton's only seven, win, seven points away from a win. Marquette needs to recover. Can they do it? No Elizabeth Orff also on the floor down for Marquette. It's Jones in the rotation right now. Eight to three. Madeline Cole serving. Seven points away from the end of this match are the Creighton Blue Jays. Mosier had it dug out. Zimmerman, good dig by Rose. Wirch on the opposite side. Cole with a sliding save. Davis gets it right where nobody was. Yeah. Mosier got her hand on it, but. It looked like Kanavadov was trying to go there for the dig, but Mosier just couldn't read it there, and it's going to lead to Marquette to call another timeout, their last timeout of the set. 9-3, to three, Creighton leads. 3-0 scoring run for the Blue Jays, and Marquette just has nothing on the defensive side right now, despite having two DSs in the game. Yeah, they got to figure something out here just because they're down by six now, and this game is just getting a little bit farther away from them of coming back. But they can do anything they can, Dan. They can come back into this, but it all starts with coming out of this timeout. It's the way they respond. So it's 9-3 to three here in the fifth. I'm Dan Abbotson alongside John Leuzzi at the Al McGuire Center. Number 10 versus number 13. Creighton Blue Jays on the verge of an upset. And this game slowly getting away from the Golden Eagles. If Marquette doesn't turn it around right now, then that's it. Yeah, they got to do something here. It all starts what they come out of this timeout. The way they respond will determine how the rest of this game goes. You got to want it. I feel like they want it, Dan, but they got to show it now. 9-3 Marquette trails. And it's Madeline Cole serving. Davis up to 30 kills. Wirch, attack from the back row. Marquette gets the point. That's a start. Yeah, it is. Got to use it as confidence now. Vandenberg back in there. She's, she'll be big up at the line, but also with her swings. Something that she's been able to take to her advantage here tonight. That's an extra offensive option that Marquette now has. Yep. They can go to Wirch, Mosier, Vandenberg, or Jones. Davis. Wow. So much power. Yeah. Right to the back line. 10-4. Five points from the end of the match. Davis serving. Wirch. Rose. Mosier. Witt gets it up. Kostelak swings. Marquette gets it up, but into the stands. Yeah. 11-4. Down bigger now. Bigger deficit. I don't know what else to say. Marquette needs to respond. This one's getting away. Yeah. Marquette needs to rattle off a lot of points. Davis. Vandenberg. Got it blocked. Marquette gets it back. Witt with a diving save. Kostelak. Sarah Rose got her arm on it. But Marquette now down eight. 12-4. Yeah. Creighton can smell the victory. Yeah, down by eight. It's tough. It's tough right now for this Golden Eagles team. Davis at the serve now. It's out. Service error. Now Davis is out of the rotation right now, so Marquette has to do that, use that to her, their advantage, because the strongest player for Creighton is not on the court right now. Gabby Martinez comes in to serve. The junior defensive specialist. Rose gets one up. 
Vandenberg. Dug up by Witt. Kostelak, tip. Hickman just barely got that one back over. 13-5, yeah. two points away. Couldn't really do anything there. Just well drawn up. Witt serving. Vandenberg. Witt gets it up. Kostelak dug up. Wurch back row attack. Off the hand of Madeline Cole and into the stands. 13-6. Speckman and Barber are back on. That's big. Yeah, that's big for them for sure. Inching their way back, still down by seven. It's not like you're down by a point or two. You're down by seven. Still a lot of work to do. We've learned. Can't count this Marquette team out, though. Correct. Right Service there. ace. 13-7. Just keep chipping away. Yeah. One point at a time. Keep That's Marquette's fighting. mentality. Don't worry about too much. Just stay in the present. Worry about the getting that first point. Kostelak out of system. Barber from the line. Zimmerman went cross. Marquette gets it back over. Kostelak splits Wurch and Speckman. Match point. 14 to 7. A challenge that. Mm. Challenging a net violation against Creighton. All right. I didn't really see it. Yeah, I wasn't really paying attention. Worth a try. To that. I was looking at more towards. The other side of the court. I don't know how. Didn't Marquette run out of challenges? Yeah, that's. I was questioning myself with that too. But hmm. maybe I don't know. they get one back in the fifth. Maybe, I possible. I'm still learning. <laughs> if the call stands, it's 14-7. If it's overturned, 13-8. Golden Eagles will only be down by five then. Still Creighton point. 14-7. One point away from the end of the match. Match point. Marquette. On the verge of being upset. By the Creighton Blue Jays. Zimmerman. Barber smacked it into Witt. Marquette's not out just yet. Comeback starts just with that. Doing the little things to go back to the fundamentals and just keeping faith. Vandenberg now to serve. 14 to 8. Marquette needs to rattle off six straight points. And it's out. That's an attack error by the Golden Eagles. And the Creighton Blue Jays come in and get the win on a five-set thriller. Um, it's, a tough, it's a tough swallow there for this Marquette team because they just fought their way back down 2-0, made, made them go to a fifth set. They just The excitement and the energy was just not there in this fifth set, Dan, and that kind of that killed them. Marquette goes to 15-3 on the year. 5 and 1 in Big East play. 3 and 17 all time against Creighton. Now on a 6 game losing streak against the Blue Jays. Creighton now 13 and 3. Still undefeated. They're at the top of the Big East now. And they are certain to move up from their 13 spot in the country after yeah. beating a top 10 team. Yeah, for sure. They showed a lot of they showed a lot of fighting here. Davis Hickman, two of their big guy, two big players of the night for this team and they that's why they led them to a win here tonight. It's a tough swallow for Marquette, but let's put the, they now need to focus on Villanova coming on Friday because you just can't make one loss to show your entire season. Keely Davis, 31 kills for the Creighton Ooh. Blue Jays. Allie Barber was the most on the Golden Eagles with 23. 
63 assists from Adeline Cole, 35 digs from Brittany Witt, both match highs. Lawrence Beckman, 30 assists for the Golden Eagles, 24 digs from Libero, Martha Kanavadov. And Marquette takes just their third loss of the season at the hands of the Creighton Blue Jays. John, any final thoughts before we wrap this one up? This will just get back to work, focus on the Wildcats, get ready for the road trip this upcoming weekend. So that'll do it for us here on Marquette Radio. We want to thank everyone out there for tuning in. So Marquette takes the five-set loss against Creighton. They lost the first two, won the third and fourth, but couldn't pull it out in the fifth. Thanks again for listening. For my partner, John Leuzzi, I'm Dan Abington. Thanks for tuning in. Stick around for Jackson Gross and the post-game show in just a few seconds. Thanks for tuning in. Have a great night.